In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down a little bit of a counter to a play that I talked about a few days ago in the West Coast Playbook. What's up, guys? My name is Cody. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's YouTube video. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, my channel is all about Madden 21 tips and tricks. We break down offensive tips and defensive trips every single day here on YouTube. We post videos every day at 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And we also live stream and play Madden with our subscribers every single night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So if you are interested in getting better at the game, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the right hand uh, side of your screen there. Uh, research shows that only 40% of the people that will actually watch this video are actually subscribers of mine. So if you're new, Go, sh go ahead, click the subscribe button. It's completely free to do that. It's not like Twitch where you have to pay. So completely free to subscribe. If you want to join the channel, also I haven't talked about this in a while. If you want to join the channel, there's a join button there at the bottom right. It supports me a ton and it gets you guys some great perks as well. So if you have any questions about that, you can always text me. My number is in the top left-hand corner of your screen. All right, guys, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the West Coast playbook. Now, I've been labbing the West Coast playbook like super, super hard the last couple of days. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk to you about, but one of the things that I want to talk to you about today is the snap throw. And my the whole reason, the, the why behind the what, right? The why behind my love for the West Coast playbook has always been that I believe that you could create some really, really good quick snap throws that are actually critical little um, West Coast, like quick pass, short pass, kind of baby dots that are really, really good in tight ball games, right? When you're playing someone, they're, they're you know, just as good as you, if not better than you, and you need that like quick little dot on third and four or fourth and three or something like that. That's why I run the West Coast, that, or that's why I've been running it, and that's why I originally ran it when I first uh, learned it. And this formation has always given me that. This this far tight slot has always provided quick passes that are super, super effective. So uh, I want to break down the curls play, but I want to break it down in combination with the flats play. It doesn't necessarily have to be the flats play. It could be another play from this playbook. Um, but but specifically, we're going to start with the curls. And I posted this video a couple days ago. Um, first and foremost, I want to just show you my coaching adjustments here. I just have my curl flat set to 20. Hooks are on default. Flats are on default. Um, and then this is the rest of my settings here, just so you can see. Because kind of everybody's going to put their flats on or their curl flats on 20 to 25 yards. Um, what they do with the rest of their defense, that's kind of the the question. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to come out in nickel 335 wide. And I'm actually going to, or nickel 335 and audible to nickel 335 wide. Um, a lot of people are running that uh, defense. I actually posted that defense. Um, that's in, in my defensive ebook as well. If you want to pick that up, that's in the description. Um, but, anyways, so uh, I'm just going to come out and cover two. And I want to show you this. this uh, snap throw from curls and then I want to kind of talk about what the defense is going to do to stop it and what that's going to then open up for another snap throw that you can start to do off of this and the reason why I do these snap throws is because if you run an under center offense number one I love to just get the ball out quick right but number two if you run an under center offense a lot of times what pe most people will do is they will blitz the freaking living daylights out of you uh, I played a game last night where literally he user rushed me every single play. So, um, and we can we're, we're gonna actually show you guys how to stop all that in our far tight uh, scheme. But uh, but anyway, let's take a look at the snap throw. So so this snap throw is something I kind of developed um, back. I think it was gosh, I think it was like Madden thirteen. I mean, it was a long time ago. Um, but this snap throw has always worked and almost always worked in Madden. This curls route is one of the glitchiest routes, like year in and year out, just because of the way that it. Basically, you just you can snap throw it very easily. So um, all I'm going to do is I want to motion this guy to the right side of the field. And basically, if the corner on the outside is not in a hard flat, you should be able to throw this ball. So I'm going to motion him over, and I see oh he's not in a hard flat. So I just it's just a low ball, and it's an automatic uh, automatic completion. Now you might be saying, well, what if they run to cover three, and they put their outside guy uh, in a hard flat? Well, the beauty of this is based on the leverage of the formation and what the formation allows you to create with leverage um, as far as the motion ability of this route, you're going to see that if the corner drifts back at the snap of the ball, so like what I'm my main read on this is if the corner drifts back, that's what I'm looking at, and I know that I'm going to be able to throw that ball to the outside every single time. So I'm going to motion over Godwin. I'm looking at this right side corner, 
And if the corner drifts back, which he does, you see that's a hard flat and a safety. The reason I came out in 3 3 5 uh, wide is because I wanted you to see it with a the safety there. Because if a linebacker is there, the linebacker will never jump it. Safeties will jump it. Okay? So that's just something that you have to be aware of when you're running this scheme. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I tried to do the same. Um, if I tried to do the same low ball that I just did right with Godwin and I snapped him like right here and I tried to low ball, you see the safety will jump it. If a linebacker wasn't there, he wouldn't do that. Okay. Or, or uh, if a linebacker was in that position, he would not jump the ball. He might swat it, but he would never pick it. Okay. That's kind of a little bit of the, you know, ins and outs of Madden 21 is linebackers by rule just don't normally jump routes i mean it's very rare that they do um okay so so just to just to kind of show you that um the next thing i want to show you here is if i take a if i if i show you this real quick um so the next thing that they're going to do is they're going to go with this this hard flat strategy right that's what they're going to do so what you've got to be prepared for on your end is okay well when i motion this guy across um, if I snap like right here and I throw it to the outside, you see he will pick it. So there's a couple things that you can do off of this, right? There's a couple things that's going to happen. So number one is you can extend your motion out. The one issue with extending your motion out is that if he runs cover two, so I'll show you that real quick. So if he runs like a, a standard cover two, right? And you extend your motion out to the numbers, like right about here, you see here, I can still lowball this. So that's kind of a... A little bit of a workaround. The one issue with that, though, is let's say that he runs a hard flat to the corner. Okay? And now we're kind of getting into some of the reason for the need for something additional on top of this, right? So he runs a hard flat to the corner. You see here, I can kind of fit that. I can still kind of fit that low ball in, right? It's only when he does what I'm about to show you where things start to get a little bit difficult. So what they're going to do to stop this, at least this is just my estimation as far as like what I've seen um, them have to do to be able to stop this. And this is Jair Alexander, so it's a good corner out there too, is they're going to double flat. So they're going to take their outside guy and they're probably going to put him on like a, um, they're probably going to put him like a, a cloud flat, right? And then they're going to put their underneath guy on a hard flat. The reason that this is going to be so challenging is because you can't lowball the throw against the cloud. Like if I lowball this throw, you see the safety is going to stop it, and we're basically, you know, we're not in a good position. So there's a there's a little bit of a workaround that you can do to kind of deal with this. There's kind of two options. Number one is to call another play that I'm going to show you that is really 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 good against what that coverage is going to do. Or number two, to wait for the route to get open. Based off of um, based off of some manipulation that we can do to the zone, so I'm going to show you both of them. So the first one is, let's say that they're running that right, they're running that defense. Now that's the only defense from my research. That's the only defense that will be able to stop that route. Okay, it's the only defense in the game that will be able to stop that route. If they run man coverage, I could I'll talk to you about man coverage here in just a minute, um, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. But if they run this, this is the only defense that can stop it. So the first option that you can do is take your tight end and just put your tight end on a curl and take your take your back and put him on a swing. Something as simple as this route right here. And what you'll see is when I snap this, the flats are going to get pulled. And you can kind of fit that into Godwin. Now, it doesn't look like a super clean throw, and it does take time to develop. So that's kind of the one thing that I want you to understand with this is that that's a it's, – it's a – it's not a big stretch for you to put a swing route to your fullback and to adjust that way. The What I'm going to say is the one issue that I feel like it has is, in my opinion, you're not going to necessarily have time to hit that, especially if you're dealing, you want this ball to come out quick. So we're going to show you another quick pass. Another option that you have, um, if you're on the either the middle of the field or the left side hash mark, which, which is what I'm on right here, if you were on the right side hash mark, you couldn't do this, right? But if you're on the left hash mark or the middle of the field, you could do this. It actually works really, really nicely in combination with everything that you're doing from this play. Basically, what you would do is you would have double flats, right? And in all reality, they're probably going to drop this guy into something, right? Unless they're sending super heavy pressure at you um but if you have that you could put this you could put this back on a wheel route and what you'll notice is this little route to godwin's going to pull both flats 
and basically he's going to cut right underneath it and it's an easy read so they take the flat you take the wheel they don't take the flat you throw the flat basically okay so that's kind of a, a one step two step thing as far as man coverage goes i uh, just want to show you this you're not going to get a lot of people that are going to say okay i'm going to run cover two man on you um, especially because of what you can do for some of the other plays in this a lot of people are not going to run cover two man with uh, like hard flats um, they're typically going to run cover two man with purple zones because they're worried about crossing routes and things like that so that's kind of the general way people are going to do it i'm not going to necessarily put a ton of time into preparation for cover two man with zero dropped uh flat zones i just don't think that's going to be something you're going to get but um you see here it's the same kind of timing here but if I see man, I just wait for him to go, and then I low ball it as soon as he turns around. And you'll, I'm telling you right now, I've never thrown an interception on that route. Never thrown an interception uh, throwing that. Even if they press coverage you, um, I've, I've found that, you know, press coverage will do a little bit better because they'll get underneath it. But you see, like, right on, the, right on the turn, the corner, like, straight up just glitches out. I don't know why he does, but I literally just throw a low ball at the, at the player, okay? And if it's shaded coverage over top, which typically it's going to be shaded coverage over top, um, it's not going to stand a chance. I mean, it really, really won't. Another thing you could try, um, which I don't really like to do, is you could kind of like throw it like right as he – you could try to – you could experiment a little bit with this route, like especially if you have a gunslinger quarterback, which, by the way, if you're running this, I think you really do need a gunslinger quarterback to hit this route consistently. But like if I just throw this to the outside, you see that it kind of – like the corner – the corner kind of doesn't react to the ball. That was cover two man, just stock. Um, and I, I've found that that is actually fairly consistent. Like if he's running right here and I just throw it like right there, you see and right there, I mean, he did react. So all in all, I think it's the best to just kind of wait for him to come back to the ball. But just so you're aware, like you could, you could work this route a little bit. Like, if he comes here, you could do something like that right there and kind of have a, a shot. And you might need to practice it a little bit more, but but it could work. So that's Curl's play, right? Now I want to show you the, the counter to it, and I want to show you, like, what do you do when they start to do the one thing that can stop him, okay? that That's kind of what I wanted to talk about in today's video. So what do you do when they stop it? What do you do when they start, like, over, over committing to stop the Curl's play? Um and you want to be able to snap throw, right? That's what you want to be able to do. At least that's what I want to be able to do. Well, what I like to do is I like to, it's actually fairly simple, um, as you can imagine. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, Chris Godwin here, and I am going to oftentimes be putting him on a curl route or a hitch route. It's depending on kind of some of the combinations that you want to create but like, let's say, and that's why I wanted to have the flats play because I want to have like a deep post over the top if to kind of force them to user that over the, over the top. If you have hot route master, I would recommend just putting Mike Evans on a post route. Um, or if you, you have a slot apprentice, you could do that as well. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create essentially the three man route combination that is so super, super, super popular from trips tied in. I'm going to create that from far tight slots. So um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Howard and I'm going to put him, if you have hot route master, I'd like to put him on a ghost route. But if you don't have hot route master, um, that's fine. You could just put him on an option route or you could put him on a curl route or you could put him on a swing route. It's really up to you. You can do any of those three or four things. But basically we're going to have two curls and two uh, and, and one little flat route. And it can come from any of the receivers that you want it to um and and so that's you know that that's kind of what i'm going to do so so anyways um what i'll do with gronk here uh typically is he's going to go on a curl route godwin's going to go on a hitch route and howard's going to go on a swing route this is kind of the basic route combination that i'm going to use and so what you're going to notice it's going to happen and it happens like super super consistently basically these guys in theory the flat route and the um the double flatting of the of the players on the right they should like really pull out to go to the swing route which should leave a window for chris Godwin. so i'm gonna use the same motion snap him right about here and you'll see they're gonna go down and i can hit that low ball quick it's really really quick the way it works and the beauty of this play 
is you oftentimes get him out there so far that it's because again you got to remember they're adjusting to stop curls right they're not adjusting to stop this version of play so um so anyway so if you go to the flats play here and on the back side with the running back if you have like a backfield master i think a texas route works really good in this play um i think a ghost route works really good a wheel route will work really good anything you really want honestly i will probably just because of the nature of far tight slot and how much i get blitzed out of it i might just block him uh and when i block the running back i typically slide protect to the side of whichever way i think the, the rush is going to uh like the user rush would come in so in this specific formation typically they're going to basically i would want to slide left from far tight slot okay so anyway um i'm going to have this basic combination right here and you'll notice let's see right here so now if i have a vert hook you see that you see that even even if i have a ver vertical hook coming from the the nose tat or the the defensive end right there the vertical hook will oftentimes basically have to choose between the curl route and the hitch route those are the two routes that he's going to have to deal with now the one thing that i actually really like to do which i think is super super underrated from this and you can only do it if you have like a hot route master but if you have a hot route master or um, not even a hot route, if you have a tight end apprentice which i would recommend a tight end apprentice or a hot route master for the scheme 100 percent guaranteed that that's going to be super super effective but one of the things that i really like to do is something like this right here i think this putting them on a corner route and then just kind of snapping right here you're going to see that this corner route is going to get over a lot of defenses um, because they're going to come down on that swing route. So you can hit that corner route. But um, let's just deal with the curl for now. Um, one other thing that you can do is you can actually do kind of the inverse, right? So uh, let's say that I was facing Tampa 2. And you can kind of do the same thing, the same basic combination. It's just different people are on that route. So, for example, what I'm talking about here is I could take, um, if I have like a, a backfield master or something, I could take this guy and put him on a ghost route. And I could take the tight end and put him on a flat route. Okay. And then this, and then what I can do is I could take Godwin across and put him on a curl. And what you'll find is this curl is going to kind of come right up in this seam here as a quick snap, get it out there kind of throw. And most of the time, they're not going to be expecting that. And honestly, most of the time, that's going to be super, super, super effective for you because what most people are going to do is that little um, yellow zone, it doesn't oftentimes drop that back. Like It really doesn't drop back, especially when you've established the one that you're wanting to snap throw and you're wanting to kind of work the ball down the field on them. What they're going to start doing is they're going to start doing something like this. They're going to start putting their hooks at five yards or even at zero yards. And where that's going to become an issue for them is with this with this play here. Now, you know, it, like I said, curls might not be the best play. Like bench switch, I could see bench switch being really, really good for this play, this kind of um, route combination. Um, you know, different, different, you could do different things, right? Um, but what you'll see here and really what we're trying to do is just have something that can kind of be an inverse of what we were doing from the other setup but using the same look right kind of that idea of making everything look the same so you can see this right here so all of the yellow zones are going to come down at the snap of the ball um and so when you basically what's going to happen is when you create this route combination right here like a little option i'm, I'm thinking like an option route right um if you don't want to have to use hot route master um, but motion him over and you'll see that he's going to get in a nice little pocket against the zone coverage so the zone coverage is not going to be able to uh, really deal with him um, on that route and because again they have basically kind of had to uh, over commit to stop this route so it's really really easy but basically like right here you're looking, oh, the flats go. Okay, then I can throw right there. So so that's kind of the idea. Um, and then one last thing that you can do, um, and this is, uh, this is primarily just a, almost like a shot play, but if you're getting a lot of Tampa 2 and if you're getting a lot of zone drops, what we know about cover 2 and what we know about zone drops is that if they do cover 2 and they, and they run that defense, 
the zones won't press. Like, my guy won't get rerouted. He won't get pressed. He won't get anything. So a simple, um, honestly, just running curls, which basically has this tight end on a streak. So if you have the tight end on, like, a little streak here. And then, honestly, what I would do is just simply run an angle route slant, like, combination, like, something like this right here. And then when you motion Godwin across, you're going to put him on a fade route. And basically, right before he sets up, like, right there, you're just going to snap it. And you'll see that I can pass like that to the, I should have been able to pass that to the right side. Um, right there, I don't know why I wasn't. But you could you could kind of get that, you could kind of get your uh, get your streak going on. Because again, they're putting so many resources um, to having to stop this, um, this little route here. And if you wanted to, maybe the streak, maybe you just do something like this, right? But basically just get him over here, get him on the outside. And you see there, I can... I guess I can't really get that to him, but um, you would be able to if I let me just show you if like if you if your ball was um, if your if your uh, field of possession was on the left side hash, you'd be able to do this for relatively easily. So again, this is just Tampa two. They're gonna have to press you, so you get something like this. There's no reroute. Wow. I don't know why he can't get over a little bit more. It's like he almost can't get all the way to where he wants to be. But you might need to be, you maybe need to use something else. Maybe just a simple streak. Let's try that. Man, I guess I guess you just throw it inside. You could, you could throw it inside if you have inside. If you have inside position, you can throw it inside. If you have outside uh, position, you can throw it outside. That's kind of the, the bottom line. Um, a lot of people will not base a line on you. A lot of people will, will, will do something like this where they're kind of doing, you know, this little trick here. And we talked a little bit about how to beat that. But again, if you just simply streak him, like it's going to be, it's going to be a tight throw. You're going to have to kind of understand and you'd want to combine this with something else. For example, um, maybe you have hot route master, or maybe you have something on, on your ability to put, um, this left side receiver on a, on a post route or something, right? And then you go and you run something like this right here. Um, but basically, once he gets kind of in this little no man's land, that's going to be an easy read for you, um, for you to be able to get the ball out of your hands quick. So that's far tight slot. That's a little bit about it. If you want to get the full far tight slot mini scheme, go ahead and shoot me a text message. My number is 812 uh, 216 3644. We're going to be releasing that this afternoon slash evening to our text message members. Really, really excited to share it with you. Hope you enjoyed this video breakdown. If you have any questions, go ahead and shoot me a text message. Thank you guys so much for your support. And again, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen.